what's up guys uh, my name is John and this is the first video of the Vogish cars YouTube channel so a uh, quick rundown of what this channel is going to be it's going to be a lot of automotive reviews uh, maybe just overall driving reviews but then also I might make some videos focusing on things that I either loved or didn't love about the cars that I reviewed so today's video is going to be focusing on the 2004 Chevrolet Corvette so uh, for those who don't know much about these cars these have the LS1, so that's the uh, 350. That's the first LS-based engine that GM put in a car. Uh, this one is a 2004, so it has some of the later uh, model year upgrades. So it's got things like uh, the LS6 intake, and then it's also got uh, a number of driveline upgrades compared to the earlier model year C5s. Uh, this particular car has a six-speed gearbox, has the T56 transaxle, does not have the Z51 handling package, which was mostly just uh, springs, sway bars, and uh, power steering cooler. But this car does have selective ride control. I can select it between tour and sport. It's also got an active handling button, which I uh, haven't really messed with, but I pretty much always leave the car in sport. I think it rides good enough in sport. Uh, I did ride in tour a little bit, and I didn't really notice any difference, but um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. So uh, just a couple quick notes on this car as well. This is the commemorative edition car. And what that essentially means is that you get a couple things. So it's essentially a Le Mans blue paint job. Uh, it's a nice color. It's a nice dark, deep blue. But it's got a lot of sparkle and uh, you know flake in the sun. It also comes with a shale interior, as you can see here. And then it also comes with stitching in the headrests this one behind me so you just get a Corvette logo stitched into the headrest and then also all of the emblems on the exterior of the car have a commemorative edition emblem before I start driving I would like to say that I'm gonna be doing a lot of straight road driving I'm working on trying to find a nice curvy road around here but I live in BFE there's uh, nothing but fields everything is square here so the first thing I want to talk about is where you spend most of your time and that's inside the car so the interior leaves a lot to be desired in these cars, but it's kind of to be expected if you know anything about late 90s, early 2000s, or just 90s in general, 2000s GM, you didn't get a lot of quality. Uh, and that's okay, because I think in this car, it actually adds to the experience. And I'm gonna talk more about the things that I don't like about this car in another video, because I think it kind of deserves its own separate video. But that being said, I think overall, it, it does add, as a whole, a positive experience to the car, in that it's, it's not very refined. And there's nothing wrong with that. This car is all about driving experience, in my opinion. It's one of the best that I've had. And I've been in quite a few cars, uh, just because I know people who own cool cars, own performance shops. Uh, so that being said, you know, this car, it really does deserve high praise. And, and I will give it that, most certainly. So it, it steers great. Uh, it, it certainly doesn't uh, ride the best, but for what it is, I think it rides pretty good. You know, you think of a Corvette, you think it's not going to ride well, and I think it rides pretty decent. And uh, even in sport mode, I, like I said, I maybe touring makes more of a difference than I realize, but I haven't noticed it. But overall, it, it's just a good experience. You get great steering feedback. You get you know, all kinds of feeling from the suspension. When you're when you're really ripping the car and you're going hard in turns, you know, you get a lot of feedback, and you feel like the car is really communicating with you. And that's something that I love about this car. And one thing I also love is uh, the drivetrains. So second gear, 3,000 RPMs, 40 miles an hour, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, I mean, this thing freaking pulls, man. It's a blast. This car in stock form, you know, you think, oh, you know, 350 horsepower, it's not a lot. Uh, but you're also talking 365 foot-pounds of torque. And this car just puts it down so well. These cars aren't very heavy. They're around 3,200 pounds or so. And so you're, you know, at that time, these cars were fast. You know, they were competing with cars like uh, the Ferrari 355. So this is a respectable car as far as performance goes. They are surprisingly fast for what they are. They put the power down well, and they're just a great driving experience. They're just monsters, even in stock form. In second gear, anyone that I've taken for a ride in this car, they were impressed. And you know, I think that says something, I think it says a lot about the car. I think it says a lot about what GM put into for this car. There's certain things where they definitely skipped out on effort. 
Uh, but when it comes to the drivetrain, they did a great job with this car. And just for anyone who doesn't know, uh, these drivetrains use a torque tube. So what essentially that is, is you have your engine, and then you have a bell housing where your clutch is, and then the torque tube is kind of like a drive shaft, except that it's a, it's a structural roll in the car. It's a solid tube that connects to the bell housing and then goes all the way down the car. That's what's right in this tunnel here. And then on the end of the torque tube is the transmission, and the transmission bolts to the differential. So that's a transaxle. You know, you have a good amount of weight in the front and a good amount of weight in the back. You get a good balance. And that's why these cars, part of the reason why, they handle so well. Now, when you're cruising, there are a couple issues. Uh, get some road noise especially around like the doors maybe it's just because these window seals are old maybe they need replaced I don't know you get some wind noise and stuff like that but it's not the most refined experience but I think that's what adds an overall great experience to the car and you know I've got a my Camaro that I've got although right now it's on jack stands and it's about to get a total overhaul it was a pro charge car it was making 550 wheel horsepower fourth gen Camaro by the way and that thing made 550 wheel and you know, it was pretty, it was pretty gnarly. And this isn't as gnarly as that was, but I would say it's actually surprisingly close. It just, like I said, it just puts the power down so well. The gear ratio, which is a 342, uh, that's the standard for the six speed cars. GM just killed it, man. I mean, I, I think that as far as drivetrain stuff goes on these cars, the overall performance is fantastic. I, I really couldn't ask for much more, especially for this era. You think that this car was made in, uh, you know, started being made in the mid late 90s that's a lot of performance and like i said it's putting up numbers comparable to that of like the ferrari 355 so at a fraction of the cost by the way and i think that this car is still one of the best performance bargains there are so i actually found this car i got for about 15 grand and this current market that's pretty insane 80,000 miles a six-speed car 04 so it's one of the last years one of the best years and it's a commemorative edition 15 grand like I said it's a bit low for this current market uh, I got a steal of a deal can't turn that down even with the prices being up a bit I still think they're one of the best performance bargains and these cars have great mod ability you know you can do a lot of stuff to them to make them drive better make them handle better make them go faster you've got a great powertrain the LS1, probably one of the worst LS engines, but that being said, it's still a fantastic engine. If you're the worst LS engine, you're still fantastic. You know, this, this drivetrain is amazing. Everything about it, the transmission, the engine, the way it puts the power down, the gearing, the, I mean, honestly, the, the fuel mileage that you can get to, it's just all very impressive. Another interesting thing that I've noticed about driving this car too is you get a lot of weird attention. You don't get a lot of young people looking at you, but you get a lot of thumbs up and waves from the old folks. And uh, there's something oddly satisfying and also kind of annoying about that. But I do like it. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting to getting more of those waves and those thumbs ups and stuff. Uh, and you, you know, I'm surprised, like I had a Fiesta ST. You get people messing with you all the time. This car is significantly faster than the Fiesta, even even with the mods I had on with the tune and the intake and you know all that stuff. And this car is significantly faster, and you get significantly less attention in that sort, which I actually don't mind. But I like knowing that I can run away from a lot of cars on the road in this car. I mean, these cars were very fast in their time, and they're still pretty fast cars, even for the you know, this modern day and age. I couldn't really give this car much higher performance praise than I do right now especially for being in a stock form. All right, here's another one. Third gear pull, do about 3,000 RPMs, right in a good meaty part of the torque curve. Going about 50 miles an hour. All right, here we go. 50 miles an hour, 3,000 RPMs. 60, 70, 80. that you spend for the performance that you get. 
uh, the ride that you get, the experience that you get, it's just fantastic. And I love these cars. They're not the best made necessarily in certain aspects, but they've got a great engine. They've got a great, you know, just drivetrain in general. And they're just an amazing car. And I'm looking forward to doing more videos in the near future. I'm going to be doing basically any any car that I can get my hands on, I'm going to be doing. And hopefully I can get a little bit better at these videos as well. Uh, if you have anything that you think that I need to work on, make sure to let me know. I'm open to constructive criticism. I will be putting another video out, focusing more so on the, the negative things of this car. Just things to keep in mind if you're considering buying one or if you're, you know, you want to buy one. Um, so I'll put that up here soon, but this is going to be the first video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hopefully you get to see more of me and I get to see more of you guys watching these videos. So you guys have a great day. Thanks so much, and I'll see you later.